Welcome back to the Homestead Friends. Welcome back to our garden. Today we're talking about something really important and you cannot afford to miss this video. We're talking about saving seeds for times of trouble. And we're gonna be talking about how to save seeds from really common garden vegetables like these tomatoes right here. Not only are we gonna talk about how to save seeds from certain fruits and vegetables, we're gonna talk about the why. Let's do that right now. Guys, we live in really troublesome times, really unprecedented times. Saving seeds in your garden for your family's future food supply, I think, is one of the most important things you can do on your homestead and as a home gardener. Now, I'm a really frugal guy. Seeds don't cost that much. But if you don't have to buy ones over and over and over again, especially from the favorites that you have in your garden, then there's really no need to do that. It's really very easy to save seeds from a lot of different fruits and vegetables. So now let's go over some really common garden vegetables. Peppers, okra, tomatoes, beans, kale, collard greens, carrots, and cantaloupe, melons, things like that. Let's talk about all of those and how to save those seeds. So here's a fully grown and flowered out carrot that we had left from last year. Now we usually leave a couple of them in place so that we can reap the seeds from the previous year. You can see the first thing that you'll get here is a beautiful flower. These are really, really beautiful. Carrots have this very nice lacy white flower on them. Where you want to harvest them for your seed saving is in this stage, when that flower has almost completely dried up. You can see all this in here is full of seeds. There's got to be several hundred seeds in here, no problem, maybe three, four hundred seeds, just in one flower head. And you can see the amount of flower heads that are on each carrot that I left. If you let just one carrot go to seed, you're probably going to 10 or 20x your seeds that you actually planted in your bed from last year. You're going to get that out of just one carrot plant if it all goes to seed. That's a huge return for you. You should never ever have to buy a carrot seed again. So beans are one of the easiest to save seeds for because you can just let them sit on the vine and dry out like this. It's no problem just to leave a few on here and collect several seeds, especially in the case of these Asian long beans. There's probably 15 seeds in each one of these pods. If you're interested in more videos like this, head below, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We'd appreciate it. Now, okra is one of the easiest plants to save seeds for because you're eating the seed pod. So, if you want to save the seeds, just leave the seed pods on there. They'll grow to a certain size and then they'll start to dry out as will the seeds inside of them. You can see how many we have on just this one plant right here. Now for certain varieties of okra, like this Chinese okra, this seed pod is just too woody and too hard to eat. There's no way. So we're gonna let these also dry out. We eat the seed pods at about this size on this variety because they're incredibly tender and really good. Also an incredibly easy fruit to save seeds from are melons, like this cantaloupe. Of course, we just cut them open, save the seeds from the inside, and dry them out. Now, like I mentioned, melons and peppers are very simple to save the seeds from. Peppers, of course, we can just come in through the top here with a paring knife, come around it, make that circle, pop it out like that, and you've got all the seeds. What we'll do is just place them on a paper towel, and they're not very wet at all, so they dry out in a matter of probably two days really easy to save these seeds. And of course with our melon, we're just slicing into it and we've got just a massive amount of seeds in here. You can basically just take them out with your finger. We're just gonna push as many out onto this paper towel as possible here. What you wanna do is get them spread out as much as possible so they have the quickest drying time and they're not holding moisture against one another. So saving seeds with tomatoes is really easy. Obviously you just cut the tomato open Take the seeds and we have just a small ramekin here and we're just going to push the seeds into it. And what we do from here is fill it up with a little bit of water. 
So the water helps to take the slimy coating off the outside of the tomato seeds. That slimy coating is a germination inhibitor and it will also hold too much moisture on your seed and they won't dry out properly. So the second step for doing these tomato seeds is really easy. All you need is a strainer, colander, sieve, whatever you want to call it. Something with a nice fine mesh here. We pour those seeds in there after a couple days of soaking in the water and simply rinse them off. Now as you can see, all that gel substance that surrounded the tomato seeds when they came out of the tomatoes is gone and we can put these on our paper towel now to dry out. So once we get the seeds out of their fruits and laid on the paper towels, we'll set them in our windowsill here, in our window box in our kitchen, where we do a lot of different things. And this gives them an opportunity to dry a little better. There's a little bit of light and the air circulates up here really nice. Leafy greens are really easy to save seeds from. You just have to let them go to seed. You have to let them bolt out, flower, and form the seed pods. After that, you can let them dry off, and of course, you're gonna get thousands and thousands of seeds from just one plant. The cool thing about collard greens is they are a perennial. They will keep coming back. They will send off these new leaves off the main stalk that it forms while your seeds are sitting here dry and waiting for you to harvest and save them. You can see once these are dry, it's incredibly easy. The seeds practically just fall out for you. With just about 10 seed pods, I have enough for about a half a pack of store-bought collard green seeds. What an incredible return on investment. Most of your leafy greens, like your Swiss chard, lettuces, and kales, all do the same thing. They will shoot out a bolt, it'll flower, and then the seed pods will form there where you can collect the seeds once they're dry. Here's an older kale plant that we have that we need to harvest the seeds from. You can see they look very similar to the collard greens. So let's talk about the old timers. They could run up to the general store, however long of a distance that was away, it could take them quite a long period of time to get there. But most of them, most of them save their seeds for the next season. So I think all of us who wanna be more self-sustaining and who live out on an off-grid property, who are more uh, prepper minded, I think it's a great practice for you to save seeds. And friends, let's look at the past couple of months. The main seed companies out there, the Baker Creeks, the Territorials, Southern Seed Exchange, Johnny's, all the big ones, all the small ones, all of them ran out of seeds. Why? Well, first is because everybody was rushing to them to purchase in maybe large quantities, but some maybe new people were rushing there also to buy them because they knew the value of it. They knew the value of growing your own food and in these times, things can change really quick. As we could see, it's even more valuable. Now for us, we are not worried about saving seeds for seed exchanges or seed sharing, simply because it is a lot of work. Because you need to worry about cross-pollination in your garden. You have to have uh, certain, if you grow two varieties of tomatoes, you have to have them at least, well, I think it's 100 yards apart from one another. We're really not going to do that. We don't have the space for that in the way our homestead is set up. So we're really not worried about it. We're more interested in future food security for our family. Now I want you to go check out this video right here, which shows you some common methods of food preservation, which is also very important on your homestead. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.